just explain our rights as medical patients and just basics of criminal pool court proceedings against yes, patients? Of course, of course. So I think, um, you know, I, I have been doing this for almost three years, and the biggest misconception really is that medical marijuana has been legalized in the state of California. Um, that's actually not the case at all. What's happened is that it's been decriminalized given a certain set of circumstances. And unfortunately, that certain set of circumstances is, is really actually still being defined. And so we're really in, in the middle of making history right now. And the cases that are figuring out how this entire system is supposed to work in a way that protects the patients is, is happening, I mean, every day it changes. But the, the most important thing to know is that is that in, in 1996 when we get Proposition 215, and what that just did is it carved out this exception and said that if you are an individual in the state of California and you have to be a resident of the state of California, and you get this recommendation from a doctor that you are allowed to be using medical marijuana for a condition that you've already been diagnosed with. So the doctor is not there to write you a prescription, it's just a recommendation, and they're not there to do a full examination and say, you figure out what condition you have. You go to a doctor and you say, I already have this particular condition, and you sit with the doctor and you decide if marijuana can be something that will help with that condition. <coughs> so with this piece of paper, this recommendation, that you as a patient are allowed to possess and cultivate cannabis. And really what this means is that you have this sort of limited immunity, that your status as a patient is your defense in court for possession or cultivation of marijuana. Again, a lot of people thought, oh, okay, I've got this piece of paper from my doctor, and so I'm good to go. I can possess <coughs> cannabis and I can cultivate cannabis. But really there are, are a lot of problems with that. First, first one that I see mostly is well, how much cannabis. So are we going to treat one patient that has you know, an eighth with them the same as another patient that has 10 pounds with them? And that's a very different patient. And it's not for us to say one patient needs one amount or the other amount, but that's very confusing for law enforcement. Um, and for the patients as well. The other issue was same with cultivation. I mean, how many plants then can someone grow where it's clearly for your use as a patient or you're engaging in, you know, trafficking of a, of a controlled substance. And so that's, that was very confusing as well. Another huge issue was this idea of, of transportation. And Prop 215 didn't talk at all about transportation. So a lot of things that were happening in the beginning is you had a patient who couldn't grow for themselves for whatever reason. And we have this idea of, of a caregiver, which is someone who's growing and cultivating for a patient, which also wasn't defined at all in Prop 215. Um, and this care, so you have to go from point A to point B to your, to your caregiver's location where they're cultivating this cannabis for you. And then all of a sudden now you're, you're driving back with your cannabis and you get pulled over. Of course, that's the moment that you have your law enforcement encounter. And typically for, for the average Joe, that's going to be hopefully your only experience with law enforcement is getting pulled over for some typical traffic stop. Then the cop smells the cannabis and you're screwed because transportation is a separate felony. Transportation of cannabis is a separate crime. So there are a lot of things that were, were not clear at all. What is the amount you can have? And what do you do in this moment of transportation? And what is this piece of paper? And what authority does, you know, this piece of paper that's your recommendation, what authority does law enforcement have to say this is a valid recommendation from a doctor or not? So there's a ton of problems, but again, all, all it is is a defense. You have a defense in court for your possession and cultivation of marijuana. Then along came uh, Senate Bill 420, which is also known as the Medical Marijuana Program Act, and that was enacted in 2004. And that really started to clarify a lot of these issues that I just brought up. And the first thing it did was it added, this, it added a defense for transportation, which is, again, hugely important because a lot of people were getting totally screwed over when they were going from point A to point B. So now you also have an affirmative defense for that. It also clarified this definition of what a caregiver is. And that's someone who, your relationship with your caregiver has to be more than just, hi Rachel, I'm gonna grow for you, and that's our only relationship. You have to have some sort of proof of consistency in caring for health, uh, housing, transportation, and things like that for a patient. And so that was good too, because you had a lot of people sort of just slapping on this title of caregiver, um, but then they, they didn't really have any way to prove that they were a caregiver. So this clarification was, was huge and, and really important for the people that were taking the risk to grow for all these other patients. And uh, it also started to lay down some, some guidelines in terms of amounts, okay? So that, that's huge too, because law enforcement, again, were saying, you don't know, I mean, one person's got this amount, this person's got the next amount, 
wasn't making law enforcement feel good, and it certainly wasn't making patients feel good. So we come up with this, this amount, the safe harbor amount, and that would be that an individual patient could possess up to eight ounces of dried cannabis, and that a person who's growing could have six mature plants or 12 mature plants. So again, we start to get some guidelines that really begin to clarify, and this is a huge help for, for really for everyone. The next really important thing that came out, and Senate Bill 420 does a ton of things, but in the interest of time, I'm just gonna highlight the, the most important ones, is that it comes up with this voluntary ID card program, which is implement, it's implemented through the state, but you, it's, a, it's an additional card that you can get from the county. So think of it like a driver's license. Like it's valid throughout the state of California, but you're gonna get it in the county where you reside. And what this, it's the medical marijuana identification card. And a lot of people don't like this because you have to go to the county and then register your status as a patient. Um, and then who has access to this information and, and why should you have to do this? I mean, if you are you know, a cancer patient, do you have to go and register with the county saying that you're receiving chemotherapy? No, it's a complete invasion of privacy. And I agree with that. And I think most activists and, and advocates would also agree. But it's also a huge protection because the idea of this card was that if you had a law enforcement encounter and you were within those safe harbor amounts that, that I mentioned before, that law enforcement had an obligation to dial into this 24, uh, 24 hour, seven day a week phone thing, or I think it's online now as well, and verify your status as a patient. And if it is true that you were a patient, a valid patient, then they absolutely could not take your cannabis and they could not arrest you. And again, the, the issue was that law enforcement were saying, and if it's true or not, who could say, but they were saying, we don't know if these, these doctor's recommendations are valid or not. I mean, they could be forged, and how do we know it's a real doctor, and we don't have the ability to, and every you know, time we go over to go to the California Medical Board website, and, and it's not for us to decide. Um, so they were claiming that a lot of these recommendations were forged. So the idea was, how do we, how do we give greater protection to the patient and take really a lot of the flexibility out of law enforcement? So it has to do a lot with this identification card program. So, um, so those are basically, in a, in a very big, you know, nutshell. Those are those are how the medical marijuana laws work. The most important thing to know, though, is it's not legalized. It's decriminalized, and you have a defense based on again all these different moving circumstances, or your recommendation, and you don't have to have the identification card, but you can. Um, and then the the issue of the collective and the cooperatives opens up a whole other um, a whole other can of worms and different rights that patients have. Thank you so much.